nationalist and leader of the John Nation. Chief Edwin Clark on Thursday asked President Bola Tinubu to urgently implement the report of the 2014 National Conference. The other statement said this in a state in a letter he wrote to the president, which he described as his message to Nigerians having clocked 97 years on May 25th. Clark said that now that the elections are over, Tunubu must immediately restructure Nigeria if the country must remain one, as that will also reintegrate, reintegrate the, the Igbo that have been marginalized in the scheme of things in Nigeria. Clark, in the letter dated 13th June 2024 and made available to journalists, called on the Igbo of Southeast and wherever they are in Nigeria to stand up and assert their rights legitimately, judiciously, and in a democratic way to benefit like any other Nigerian, as it was before the Civil War of 1967. The other statement also urged President Tinubu to apply political solution to the immediate release of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nam De Kano. The same way the federal government withdrew the three count terrorism charge, it entered against the detained president of Mieti Hala Katuhuri, Bello Bodijo. And in Clark, who in the letter expressed his heartfelt condolence for the loss of some soldiers in the country, said that the nation's security is seriously endangered. If our security force Forces, particularly the army, are being humiliated and killed by civilians for no just cause, adding that the, the fight against insecurity would ravage on for a long time, as suggested by General Taku Brutai, the former chief of army staff and the former Nigerian ambassador to Benin Republic. Clark's letter read, now that elections are over, we must face the restructuring of this country. I repeat again, the immediate restructuring of Nigeria must be carried out if this country is to remain one. And I appeal to Mr. President to take immediate action to implement the historic 2014 National Conference Report, which submitted 600 recommendations to the presidency on how to restructure Nigeria in every aspect of our lives. The Igbos of Southeast or wherever they are in Nigeria must stand up and assert their right legitimately, judiciously and in a democratic way to benefit like any other Nigerian as it was before the Civil War of 1963. Since 1975, after the civil war, the country has not been united, and it will be unpatriotic and disloyal for one to pretend that all is well in the country. The Nigeria I knew that I was born in was sitting on a three-legged pot as far back as 1944-1945 stroke when I left elementary school. This was what we were taught, that Nigeria was made up of three regions. The Eastern region, which was the mo dominated by the Igbos. The Northern region, which was dominated by the Hausa stroke Fulani. And the Western region, which was dominated by the Yoruba, Yorubas, with other minorities like uh, the U.S. Uh, squeeze within three. Uh, legged port struggling to free ourselves, and the Calabar, Ogoja, and rivers. The COR movement, who wanted their region out of the eastern uh, region, the Midwest movement, also struggling 
to break away from the Yorubas of the Western Nigeria, while the Middle Belt under the state, under the late Joseph uh, Takea, was also frightened to free themselves from the northern region, dominated by Aousa stroke Fulani. The capitals of the region were enough for Eastern security Nigeria. Okay, Ibadan for Western Nigeria and Kaduna for the Northern Nigeria. Each of the regions was governed by a governor. Whereas the central was governed by a governor general and all the regions were semi-autonomous and equal in status. From a few samples taken by me, including the following wicked and the uh, inhuman attack by civilians in various parts of the country, gives us the impression that the number of soldiers who died in the civil war in trying to keep the country together between 1967 to 1966 in less than the ones killed by, okay, by these civilians and terrorists since the administration of President Olusegun Obasanjo, yet we remain divided and some people criticized after the war had been okay created. After the war had been treated as second class citizens because they fought the civil war. Okay, please pardon me. Okay, let me take it again. It said, between 1967 to 1970, in less than the ones killed those civilians and terrorists since the administration of President Olusegun Obasanjo, yet we remain divided and some Nigeria because all the war they are being treated as second class citizens before they fought the the war. I am 97 years and when I reflect on the Nigeria I know against the current goings on, I worry for our young people of today and tomorrow. What happens to 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 them or what what hopes do they have in Nigeria's future and what is their future in today's Nigeria. I am talking of the 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. In the 30 years, uh, in the 30 years, okay, please pardon me. He said I am 97 and when I reflect on the Nigeria I knew against the current goings on, I worry for our young people of today and tomorrow. What hope do they have in Nigeria's future? And what is their hope in today's Nigeria? I am talking of the 14, the 15, the 16, and the 17 years old. In the 36 years, in the 36 states and the federal capital territory. So guys, what's your take on this? Kindly drop your comment below the comment section. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Share this video. Let it go viral. Thank you and bye for now.